Hey, Gary. That was uh, Lula. Her computer froze, so she said if you just want to get everything on their way, um, she's just trying to log in, and then she'll, okay. uh, <clears throat> she'll take your place once uh, she gets in. Sure, I can get started. Sure. Um, is, uh, is Lisa on so she can second? Yep, yeah, I think she's on. Okay. I'm here. Okay, hi, Lisa. Hi, Gary. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> All right, thanks for everybody joining. Uh, need to go through the script real quick. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the emergency ordinance, Fairfax County Athletic Council needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It's a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. First, because each member of the Fairfax County Athletic Council is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all the other members. Accordingly, I am going to conduct a roll call, or Jason will conduct a roll call and ask each member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. Jason, if you can do the roll call. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good evening, Good everybody. Evening, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm getting an echo. Let me mute everybody, everybody for one second. OK, okay. Uh, Braddock District, Marsha Pape Daniels. This is Marcia Pape. I'm participating remotely from my residence in the Braddock District. Thanks, Marcia. And Braddock alternate Marco Mira. Uh, Dreamsville District, Greg Beckwith. Or alternate Brian Lewis. Uh, Hunter Mill District, Jeremy Lee. Or alternate Harold Leff. Harold left here at my home office in Herndon, Virginia. Thanks, Harold. Uh, Lee District, Lisa Mickey. This is Lisa Mickey from my home in Lee District. Thanks, Lisa. And Lee alternate, Bill Bright. This is Bill Bright here from my home in Lee District. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Mason District, Barbara Lowry. You there, Barbara? Oh, it looks like you're on mute, sorry. I'm sorry, am I now, can you hear me now? Yep, you're all good. Okay, and I'm I'm reporting in from my home in Madison District. Thank you. Uh, Mount Vernon District, Lester Munson? Or alternate Bob Kirk? Good evening, Mr. Kirk. Thank you, Bob Kirk's here uh, from my home in the Mount Vernon District. Thank you, sir. Uh, Providence District, Steve McLaughlin? or alternate Kelly Ago Oswala. Uh, Springfield District, Mike Thompson. Yeah, here from Alexandria. Thanks, Mike. And alternate Mark Hilbrin. Uh, Sully District, Gary Flather. Gary Flather from my home in Sully District. Thank you. And Sully alternate, Mark Abbott. Mark Abbott here from my home in Chantilly. Thank you. Diversity at large, Mark Fernandez. Or alternate Eric Sohn. It looks like you're on mute, Eric. <laughs> we can come Eric, back. Try again. Can you okay. hear me? Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, Eric Son uh, from Chantilly office. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Uh, member at large, Catherine Quinn. Hi, everybody. That's Catherine from Reston. Thank you. And member at large alternate, Anne Marie Swope. Hi, Anne Marie here from my home in Reston. Thank you. Uh, Tom Clifton, Jeff Stein. 
Uh, town of Herndon, Roland Taylor. Uh, town of Vienna, Sam Althoff. Uh, baseball Council, Rob Honey. Basketball Council, Steve Bergstrom. Or alternate, Stu Clark. Uh, fast pitch softball, Susie Williamson. Or alternate, Ryan Buchanan. Uh, football Council, Mark Miena. Or alternate, Ted Hollingsworth. Lacrosse Council, Marianne Wagner. Marianne's here from her home office in Great Falls. Thanks, Marianne. Uh, alternate, Dave Paddock. Slow pitch softball, Christine Idup. Soccer Council, Lula Bauer. Oh, we can't hear you, Lula. All right, we can see. Hopefully, you get it figured out. Um, alternate, uh, Trish Moxie. Hi, this is Trish Moxie from my home in Springfield. Thanks, Trish. Uh, volleyball Council, Rob Bailey. And alternate, Amory Swope is still there. Uh, women's sports programs, Jenny Cantwell. Or alternate, Hillary Richardson. And Park Authority, Kurt Lewis. This is Kurt from my home in Fairfax. Thanks, Kurt. Um, Fairfax County School Board, Megan McLaughlin. Hi, Megan here. Good to see everybody. Um, looking forward to uh, being um, present for uh, all that you guys have to do with Fairfax County Schools and, uh, and supportive athletics. Thanks, Megan. Um, Bill Curran. This is Bill. I'm here from Fairfax. Thanks, Bill. And uh, Vicki Gardner and John Chapman, FCPS Community Use. So, John. Yep, this is John. Um, I'm here from FCPS headquarters. Thanks. Thanks, John. And NCS Lloyd Tucker. This is Lloyd. Um, here from my home in uh, Prince George's County. Uh, NCS Mark Martino. Uh, I am here from uh, from my home. All right, that's that's it. Um, either Gary or Lula. I'm not sure if Lula sounds back on. Jason, I think Mark oh, Mianna joined. Mark Mianna, gotcha. He did. He joined. Thank you, sir. All right. Did I miss anybody else? Up. Anybody else just sign on? All right, uh, Jeremy Lee. No, oh, gotcha, Jeremy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, we do have a quorum, so you guys are good to proceed. Excellent. I'll finish up and Lula can take over after we go through the um, the the rest of this. At this point, I'll pass the virtual gavel over to Lisa, so I may be heard to make the requisite motion. I move that the member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of the Fairfax County Athletic Council. Are there any seconds? I second. Seeing as there are no objections, the motion's approved. Excellent. Second, having established that each member's voice may be heard by every other member, we must next establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures, the fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used, and how we have arranged for public access to this meeting. Therefore, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for the Fairfax County Athletic Council to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. And that as such, FOIA's usual procedures, we, which require the physical assembly of the Fairfax County Athletic Council and the physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that the Fairfax County Athletic Council may conduct this meeting electronically via Microsoft Teams and that the public may access this meeting by calling 1-571-429-5982, phone conference ID 321-455-154, pound sign, 
It is so moved. Is there any seconds? Mike Thompson seconds. Are there any objections? Seeing there is none, the motion is approved. Finally, it is next required that all of the matters addressed in today's agenda must address the emergency itself or necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the Fairfax County Athletic Council lawful purposes, duties and responsibilities. It is so moved. Are there any seconds? Mark me in a second since Megan's here. Are there any objections? Hearing no objections, the motion's approved. Great, thank you, Lisa. I will now turn it over to see if Lula can be heard. <laughs> I don't she think cannot. she can. No, she asked if you still could nothing. <laughs> That's you okay, me? Lula, I got your back. Can you, can you hear me? <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah. we're good now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Are there any citizens on this call? No. Um, are, uh, presentations to the council? Gary? No, that's uh, before before you do that, I believe that Megan needed to jump on Lula. I'm not sure if you got that message or not. I, I did. I was going to yield my my agenda item to her, but that's OK. Um, Megan, can go ahead. If there's a huge echo, isn't there? Not here. I think you're good, Lula. OK, thanks. So, yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. And uh, uh, Lula, I really appreciate you yielding time to me. Um, so as many of you may be aware, um, I'm the Braddock District School Board member. I am now entering my 11th year on the board, which now makes me the longest serving along with Tammy Koufax in the Lee District. Um, so Mark Miena and I go way, way back, all the way to the Synthetic Turf Task Force and my initial service on the County Athletic Council as your school board liaison. So it's it's really wonderful to be with you guys. And I'm glad that my other bit meeting schedules are conflicting with seeing you tonight. Um, I also want to add that I'm the proud spouse of a Woodson High School graduate who was a three sport athlete, along with his two brothers and my three sons and uh, my two nephews. So, um, and I'm also a former high school and collegiate athlete myself. I say that because um, obviously I'm very passionate about sports and uh, I've really enjoyed promoting uh, sports within the county. So one of the things I wanted to bring to your attention this evening is something that prior to the pandemic, um, I had been working with Supervisor Cook from the Braddock District and then with um, now Supervisor Walkinshaw in bringing to both the school board, the board of supervisors attention that only 10 of our 25 high school stadiums have stadium bathroom facilities. Um, all the, the, the other remaining 15 still rely on uh, rented Porta Johns on an annual basis. They cost about $7,000 per high school stadium per year that we mostly rely on our boosters to help bring funding for. Um, but the crux of all of this is that as we're a very proud county, uh, one of the wealthiest in the country, um, and we know through the Athletic Council that we are so fortunate to have amazing recreational um, youth and adult leagues that have also been champions and supporters of our synthetic turf uh, fields. Um, but we really do need to um, look at having ADA compliant uh, plumbed restrooms um, for not just um, our athletes, not just for recreational use, not just for our spectators, but uh, recently as a member of the Sports Tourism Task Force with Supervisor Herity's group, if we want to be able to compete and bring um, athletic um, competitions and, um, you know, really be on the map to bring additional revenue to the county, um, through this, then we need to be looking at the stadium bathroom issue. Um, 
I do want to make you aware of a couple things. One, um, our our county athletic booster presidents um, throughout the um, Fairfax are going to be sending a, a joint message to uh, the board of supervisors and the school board asking that we consider a similar model to the synthetic turf fields where we would use one time funds at the end of the year um, to help um, cover the cost to get this done. I'm, I'm not saying it's a, a done deal by any stretch, but I do welcome conversation with all of you uh, because you represent um, you know, the, the most collective minds we have on athletics. And I also want to note that um, Bill Kern, who's with me today, our countywide DSA, um, he's also on the Sports Tourism Task Force with me, um, with Supervisor Parity and also Supervisor um, Kathy Smith out of Sully. Um, and there may be others on the call that, that have been joining us in those meetings. Um, but the, one other piece that I wanted to share is that State Senator Scott Serval um, has recently um, sponsored a bill as well that we're hoping to get strong lobbying efforts out of Fairfax County. Um, what he's asking is that um, the Virginia General Assembly um, consider dedicating $5.4 million from the Federal American Rescue Act funds that Virginia received to help pay for the water and sewer lines um, that we would need to bring to the stadiums in order to then um, construct and build um, these facilities. So this is all very preliminary. I promise you that any formal ask that uh, I might bring to you uh, for consideration um, from our community would be with written documents and things like that. But I, I wanted to get some initial information to all of you so you could start to familiarize yourself with it. It's also my understanding that Chairman Jeff McKay uh, Supervisor Dan Stork, um, uh, Bill Curran again, and then one of my colleagues, Karen Corbett Sanders, uh, also of Mount Vernon, um, that they too have begun this dialogue um, on the stadium bathrooms. So I think I'm, I really had hoped that not only to introduce this back for the group to just be aware of, but certainly um, welcome any thoughts, feedback, um, supportive or not so supportive um, that you all might have uh, as it helps me uh, to bring more information to decision makers on it. So uh, that's that's what I wanted to cover. And uh, Lula, thank you again for uh, putting me uh, so early in the agenda. I have a 7 p.m. with the Braddock District Council on the school budgets that conflicted. So I look forward to being here with all of you until 7. So I'm done. <laughs> Lula, are you mute, muted? Muted me, but that's okay. <laughs> it's probably this this laptop. Megan, I, I think this is brilliant and a long time coming. I am on the fields at least five days a week, and I host uh, a number of games on the weekend and a number of our stadium fields. Uh, I still continue to coach. I coach at the high school high school level, and I've been doing that for a number of years. And I have to say, just even practicing when the players have to run to the bathroom um, because of the conditions of them all and, and because of the, the, the state that we're in now, they choose not to. And we all know that that can create health issues. Um, and and uh, having our, our visitors come as we host, um, having the, the, you know, the porta potties. And I will say that the stadiums that I'm typically in on my end of the county, Lee and the Mount Vernon area, there are times when they don't get the attention that they need and they can't be used at all. So I, I, I just think this is absolutely brilliant. And I also I also believe that it it tells our student athletes how much we value them. It, it, so to me, I, I'm absolutely su supportive. And you know, you didn't it didn't really hit me the magnitude that this project's gonna be when you mentioned having to get water and piping and that type of thing to, to the stadiums, mainly because before Thanksgiving, my sewer line burst in front of my house. <laughs> and oh, it's been no. a mess. But um, Megan, thank you so much for bringing that forward. And, and you know, 
I am personally very supportive and, and um, actually uh, Senator Soville has a daughter that plays in the Lee Mount Vernon area as well. So thank you so much for bringing that up. If there's anything that you need from us or would like further discussion, please let us know. Yeah, it looks like, oh, sorry, I made it. Looks like no, we have a I'm, couple hands raised um, for questions. Uh, Mike Thompson. Hey, thanks. Hey, Megan, thanks for coming on tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, two things. One, the, we've we've worked on this in the past. <clears throat> um, we've looked at it at some of the other schools, things like that. One of the issues we ran into is also zoning, um, where they were, for example, when we looked at it at Lake Braddock, they wanted to require us to have enough stalls for both a, a men's and women's room assuming 100% filled capacity of the stadium at all times. And that made the, the entire project enormously expensive uh, compared to the fact that other than a few football games uh, and maybe like a state jamboree kind of thing, the stadium is never close to being full capacity. So I, I would hope that we would look at that issue. Um, and then second, uh, for your consideration is the fact that, especially if we're going to be doing this with, with funding, um, hopefully as part of the sports tourism stuff that we've all been working on together, um, I hope we can also continue to work on ways to try and make the school facilities available for those tournaments um, so that we can, can have the kind of access to do the kinds of things that the bathrooms uh, would help draw in. Uh, thank you, Mike. Absolutely agree with both of the things that you've cited. Um, to the first point, um, I'm very pleased that Supervisor Harity and former school board member Elizabeth Schultz were instrumental in um, <clears throat> discovering that Department of Planning and Zoning had that um, zoning requirement, as you described, that um, you'd have to build these massive bathroom facilities in the stadiums at 100% capacity and that's just it's not it's cost prohibitive and so for many schools that got renovated similarly at the same time both Lake Braddock and Woodson being renovated we were pretty much told that it was cost prohibitive to do it so it didn't happen since that time it was with the West Springfield high school renovation that both Elizabeth and Pat really went and dug through and were able to demonstrate to um, the the county department of planning and zoning that that in fact was not a, a requirement at the 100% capacity. So West Springfield's become like a trailblazer in us being able to now do that. Um, I'm not sure. I can't speak specifically. Mark Miana may know this better than I, or or definitely Bill Curran. But I believe Oakton, which is in the midst of its renovation, will be getting stadium bathrooms. Um, and, it, and Jeff Plattenberg, our assistant superintendent of, of facilities, he also told the school board that going forward, stadium bathrooms will be part of the ed specs. But as many people know, our high schools can take anywhere from 35 to 50 years to be renovated. So that's far too long um, for us to wait. Um, to the tournament usage, Mike, absolutely agree as well. And I think, you know, I've been a real champion in saying that um, these stadiums belong to the taxpayers of Fairfax County and that therefore the facility use for our youth and adult rec leagues and um, the ability for sports tourism, all of that needs to be um, part of our, our true one Fairfax approach um, to how we better utilize uh, what we have and how it helps everyone. Um, <clears throat> So I think both of those things can be um, the, the bathroom one with zoning is not, not going to be a problem any further. And then tournament usage, um, I think there's a lot of will um, to, to do what exactly your, your request. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I have a comment if I can have the floor. Oh, yes. Sure, go ahead, Mark. Uh, first of all, I'm happy to see Megan here. Um, she's about the only one from the school board that's ever attended regularly uh, in the last 10 or 15 years, and that's the only way you get things done. This has been out there, if you go back through the minutes, for decades, okay? It's embarrassing that Fairfax County is in this situation. 
All that said, this is a great effort for the Athletic Council to get behind and go forward if the school board and the county are together on this and want to get it done. And how could you not want to get parents, grandparents, little kids, and not only the athletes, the students and everything to have a decent place to go, which is modeled all the way around us, but not here consistently. Now, you said correctly, Jeff Plattenberg has got, he's charted this out on the renovations, which finally sunk in. You know, we sent, you know, we spend an average of about 65 to 85 million, depending on the, the time of, of, of bidding on these schools. But a lot of times we stop at the wall, not the gate which is just embarrassing. So again, if if the school board and the county supervisors want to get this done, I don't believe there's any representative of any district or any town or any sport that we wouldn't go on this with a vengeance like we did with the turf field program. However, unless a few fundamental things are cleared up ahead of time, that energy will start getting eroded and divided and, uh, you know, we're, we're floating around again. So this is a win, win, win for everybody. But you got to understand the problem and problems that have been cited here a little bit and through history. So but I applaud you for coming on. This is a pleasure. I, I Jesus, it's the only way we're going to get things done unilaterally through the county. We got to have representation from the school board. Well, thank you, Mark. I I absolutely love what we set as a precedent on the uh, synthetic turf task force if uh, for those of you who aren't aware of it when that uh, task force came together in a nine-month period um, we had the school board rep leadership board supervisor leadership park authority leadership <clears throat> and then mark and many others in the community and we developed that proposal with chris leonard um, at the time for ncs we we ended up getting full buy-in from the board of supervisors and the school board for a nine million dollars shared so four and a half million a piece over three-year period commitment using one-time end-of-the-year funds it was really exciting to get the synthetic turf put in to the um eight remaining stadiums but it was six of the remaining that we really put the money in because they were our six most economically challenged stadiums in the entire county and it was a really the harbinger of the one fairfax equity component but i mark i love your passion um i i like to attribute it to our irish roots but you're you've said it well i've lived in this county for more than 25 years now and it is an embarrassment that we're one of the wealthiest in the united states and we have our residents our players are spectators having to use porta johns it's it there's no excuse for it any further so um i i look forward to getting the buy-in on the board of supervisor side and let's face it if jeff mckay the chairman anoints it i think we're in pretty good shape and uh i'll certainly work on the school board side that's good well we finally chased the park authority from eliminating porta johns as the first item in their budget reductions we, we got rid of that about 10 years ago. Uh, Mike Thompson. You're welcome, was, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give you a byline in there somewhere. But uh, when that kind of thinking is, is out front, I mean, that's just embarrassing. And especially Fairfax suffers from comparison. Loudoun County does a great job in their facilities and other places they're starting to. We kind of pride ourselves in being leaders instead of followers, but as fundamental as what we're talking about on this subject, this is this is pitiful. This is a win for everybody. So well, let's go forward. But thank you for attending. Thank uh, you. Amen. <laughs> uh, Harold Leff, you have uh, your hand raised. Um, I do, and I came. I'm coming late to the party, uh, so I was wondering, Megan, do you have a a total dollar number this would take for all of the schools across the county or if that would scare us perhaps a per school number might be easier to say thank you harold and and that is going to be really important dollar figure to bring to everybody um i've heard the high side could be a million dollars per stadium um but nothing's been priced out yet 
um, because this is just still so much in the early conversation stages between the two boards. Um, Bill Curran, I'm going to invite you to kind of weigh in and what you might have heard since you've sat in on more of those detailed meetings. I've been told that a million again is on the high side. Um, you know, it could be much less than that. Um, so I, that would be the worst case scenario. Um, Bill, do you want to weigh in on what you've heard? I'm sorry, Megan, the boss called. I was on the phone with him. Can you repeat oh, the question? Okay. I was saying, um, you know, Harold had asked the, the most important question, which is, okay, we believe in this, but now what, what's the dollar cost we're looking at? Um, if Scott Servals, if Scott Servals bill goes through and that pays for the water and sewer lines coming into the stadiums themselves, mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what do they think the per stadium cost of the, the structure? And we could certainly draw on something like Oakton because it's the sewer, the water and sewer lines is the one piece that right. could affect the differential, but the structure is the same in every building. Do we know what that's costing? I, I, I don't know the exact cost, but you're absolutely right, Megan, and that the 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 pulling the water and sewer and power lines are by, are the, the vast majority of the expense of doing this. And in some cases, so take a Mount Vernon, you know, take uh, <clears throat> um, you know, take a TJ where, where, you know, you're or a Marshall where you're far away from where those some of those main lines may lie. You're running sewer and digging up dirt, and the the excavation alone is is pretty costly amount. So um, you eliminate that cost, and now you're just talking about brick and mortar and facility. It's it, it's not nearly as much. I don't know exactly what that would look like with regards to the footprint. We've done a couple different ones. You know, South County is a little bit different than West Springfield is a little bit different than Westfield is a little bit different than Madison. So. You know, the reality is there is some variance there, but I can get it. I'll talk to Jeff and and ask what that brick and mortar cost is separate from the water sewer. Thank you. And that's what I would say to the council that, um, A, I, I'm excited by the enthusiasm I'm hearing. And certainly uh, Bill and I could then utilize for your next monthly meeting, continue to bring you updates on information we receive and um, provide Lula and Jason you know, documents to circulate in advance that you all could look at um, as we continue to try and progress on this. But, um, you know, I would say, Lula, if uh, maybe from this meeting, if people can just, if, if anyone who's got reservations and, and is saying, no, I don't, I don't think that's a priority for the, the council, I, I would I want to just get a sense um, from people because I, I want to be respectful that um, you know, you are the council. So, um, and, and if it's just a matter of people saying, well, just keep bringing us information and we'll figure it out from there. I, I, I welcome to continue updating you guys. Looks like we have a couple more questions. Uh, Gary Flather. Uh, thanks, uh, Megan Gary Flather from Sully District. I echo Mark Miana's comments, uh, thanking you for attending the meetings. It's great to have school board representation. Um, I support the idea. I think it's a great idea. Um, I have a question to follow up on Harold's. He took half of my question, but the other half would be, do we know generally speaking, and maybe Bill has this information, how many stadiums do we have and how many stadiums need the restroom facilities or don't have them? Yeah, so it's 15 out of the 25 do not have bathrooms. Um, Bill, do you know if that the 10 who currently have it, is that number going to grow with any upcoming renovations like Falls Church or Oakton? Or yes. Okay. So, so the, the quick answer, and I'm going to see if my spreadsheet will jump up that I have with that information on it. But the quick answer is, as right now, it is consistent within renovation. So any school that goes into renovation phase is going to have them. Like Herndon will have them. Um, and Falls Church, uh, you know, as the renovation wraps up, will have them. So it's it's going to be pretty consistent as things get renovated. The problem, part of the problem with this is uh, with renovation, though, you have uh, is a slow process. And I think Megan, you said that earlier, it can yeah. be. But so, but, but sorry not to interrupt um, Bill, 
but I think to the question then, if currently we have 15 stadiums without the permanent restroom facilities, we've got three that you mentioned in the queue, Oakton, Falls Church, and Herndon. If they're all going to be taken care of through their renovation projects, then our 15 becomes 12? Yes. In the near term. Yep. Yeah. And that, going back to Harold's comment, that's not an overwhelming number if it's 10 to 15 million versus 20 plus million. Right. Um, so yeah, and that number may may even go lower as renovations continue. So that's good to know. Yeah, it would definitely, Great. I mean, I think that um, instead of the, the inaugural efforts we, um, or the pioneering efforts, I should say, we did with the Synthetic Turf Task Force, um, that you know there's a faster quicker speedier way than the nine months we spent on it because it was sort of uh, a really novel idea to start saying let's get out of our stovepipes and let's talk about this kind of shared you know benefit that we can have when we collectively target something so that's what i kind of look at here and we, um, we'll definitely work with school staff to create a timeline so that um, again we've not just got costs um, but also how far out would we go to saying well you're you know by the time we fund this you're getting it through your renovation but otherwise I mean I I I just can't emphasize enough what Lula said I mean it's the impact on our athletes and our our adult and youth um, you, you know residents who are on these fields on a daily basis um, it, it's that alone, it's not great um, for people's health um, to have to keep relying on this. And then um, our spectators, especially our older adults, um, should be navigating um, porta potties like this in a county of this wealth. So. Looks like we have one question from the chat and then Rob Hani. Um, could you please repeat the potential actions at the Board of Supervisor level? Um, from Bill Burry. Let me know if that's correct, Bill. Yeah, so what I think I was trying to capture is that um, Chairman McKay and Chair and uh, Supervisor Stork um, had convened uh, a working group to start talking about tackling this issue um, and, and certainly driving it from a point of equity so that no matter where you live in the county, um, you have these appropriate facilities. So uh, where this, I see this playing a role with the supervisors is, you know, they're the taxing authority there. They hold the purse strings. We just take what they're willing to give us. However, um, when we talk about one-time funds, that's the shared approach we took with the synthetic turf. So if we can get buy-in from both elected boards. The idea is just like we fund um, synthetic turf fields at a 50-50 rate because that's the 50-50 budgeting of students using it and during the school day and then our community using it um, outside of the school day. And so if we each make our our commitment um, to use carryover funds in a, in a targeted way like we did before with maybe a three-year funding plan, that's, that's how I see the Board of Supervisors being so crucial here is we really would need their sort of 50% um, commitment um, to to dedicate um, their one-time funds over that plan. Uh, I think the county executive, Brian Hill, had also um, expressed interest in this pre-pandemic. And then, as you can all appreciate, everybody went into crisis mode and, and this literally had to get put onto the back burner. So does that help? with the question? Yeah, he said, perfect, thank you. And last question, uh, Rob Honey. Yes, Megan, thanks for, for coming out. It's great to see you and uh, hope that we can encourage the rest of our school members over the next 12 months to pop in at least one meeting just to sort of see what we do and hear what we talk about. And I think sometimes, um, you know, members that maybe aren't as tuned in with athletics sometimes forget about how and how vital and how important athletics can be to our student body. So we appreciate you being back on here tonight. And most of my questions were already taken up through Mark and Harold. I would just comment 
as as a high school coach as well at Westfield, having those facilities is, is a true difference maker. And and just about anybody and everybody that that comes to the facilities at Westfield comments on how nice it is to have facilities. So if we're able to do that at 24, 25 high schools, I, I think you have 100 percent backing from this athletic council to do whatever we can do to help make that happen. So thank you. Rob, thank you. And if you don't mind, um, uh, Lula, I just want to respond quickly to something Rob said, because I'm all about um, strategizing as well. And I can think of nothing more powerful than, Rob, what you and Lula shared as coaches and having those testimonials. Um, and Rob, in your case, to be able to say what a difference maker and how people really recognize it when they come and visit Westfield. And so I'm hoping what we'll see is our athletic, um, I would call them athletic directors, but you know, our, our directors of student activities at each of the high schools. I'd like as much of the voices of the 10 who currently have the facilities be the lobbyists in saying, you know, we need this equity of facilities for all of our populations. And, you know, this is why we've found it to be beneficial. And we notice it when we visit the other stadiums that still are on the Porta John, Porta Potty uh, model. And so it really does affect 100% of our community in some respects, depending on where you go to your athletic competition or where you're going as a spectator to watch the competitions. Um, but you're, you know, Rob, I may be coming to you for a testimonial letter. And uh, in fact, all of you on the call, um, if you could email Jason and me and just let me know, you know, hey, here's here's my role in my community where I think I could be a really good um, letter of testimony, because I think what I'd like to do is um, create a portfolio that we would be um, presenting to both the board of supervisors and the school board. As, uh, which we did with the task force proposal, but I think testimonials matter a lot. So thanks again, you guys. I think it looks like we have one more if you still have time for one more question. Uh, Miss, Mr. Bob Kirk. Yeah, just on the, the testimonial point, I just wanted to suggest you may want to cast the net just a little bit wider. Um, I spearheaded an effort probably about five years ago to bring uh, bathrooms and a concession stand to South County Little League. Um, and sort of just the transformation in the community associated with actually having running water and bathrooms, et cetera. Um, so that might be a helpful testimonial if others have done that as well, beyond just the high schools. Absolutely. Thank you, Kirk. That would be fantastic. And uh, really, I, I, I can't tell you all how much I appreciate the generosity of time. I'm looking at the clock and I'm a little chagrined that I chewed up your meeting like this, but um, I, I would welcome any of you emailing me with your thoughts and ideas, um, and I'll confer with Bill Curran as well. We we might even want to just see if there's a, a small group that's interested in, in helping me as we connect this with, with Supervisor McKay's mm -hmm. efforts. Um, you know, in the end, as we all know, we just need uh, six out of 10 supervisors to agree that this is where they'd earmark some money. And we need uh, seven out of 12 school board members. So, um, and uh, I do want to just say a quick shout out to uh, Mark Martino, who I see on my screen because um, we and we had a good time together when he was at Lake Braddock. And uh, it's nice to nice to see a familiar face again, along with Marsha Pape. Love seeing you, Marsha. <laughs> Looks like you're on mute, Lula. Yeah. Jason, I had my hand up one more time. Yeah, yeah Mark. I see Mark's hand is up. Yeah. Uh, Megan, one thing you could do is yeah. remind the school board uh, members that they do a very good job of providing hand sanitizer when you walk inside the school or in the library or any, any other uh, room. But the health conditions around portable Johns are disgusting. OK, so we're hypocritical in our approach to a certain degree, not intentional, but by default. And I think with a holistic approach on this and using examples like that, they're that very vivid. We might get a little more traction on that side of the house. So. Um, 
you know, health health is a big issue as a convenient as opposed to a convenience. Also, we may want to uh, recommend to Jeff Plattenberg to drop the granite requirement that the bathrooms don't have to have granite and marble. That will just go with some other traditional items. That's just a suggestion. Is it granite marble over at Oakton? No, we ju I ju I ju I just looking at the cost, looking at the cost. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I thought granite and marble was part of it. <laughs> well, I will say just this. a Madison mark, just a Madison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I will say that um, I, any of you with with construction um, background as well, uh, once we do get some pricing, I'd be very curious to run that by you all as well and say, uh, are you getting the, the uh, you know, Rolls Royce of uh, facilities? Are you are you perfectly good with a Toyota and a Honda, which have been my family's cars of choice for many years. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, everybody. Thank you so much, Megan. We really appreciate it. Thank you. OK, we're going to move along. Uh, there are no presentations to the council, so we'll move to approving the minutes. Does anybody like so to? So moved. I second, second. Gary. Second. So moved, no objection, so moved. Actually, I didn't, who made the motion? I didn't hear that it was- Mike moved. Thompson. Mike, thank you, Mike. Okay, uh, on to a chairman report. I do not have a chairman report. Um, so on to committee reports, Gary Flather. <clears throat> uh, thanks, Lula. I just wanted to give an update on the subcommittee that were, um, Jason, can you mute everybody again? I'm still hearing the echo. Yep, hold on one second. Thanks. You gotta unmute yourself, sorry. <laughs> Got it. All right, All right you, thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, just give a quick report on the subcommittee um, that uh, several of us are on, uh, having to do with the communication issues between uh, the various entities, FCPS, FCPA, uh, NCS, and the community users themselves. We had a good meeting um, recently. It was very insightful. Um, I think the information was very good, and some of the members can speak up if I miss anything. But um, basically, we some of the things we found out, community services, um, themselves are having troubles uh, getting information from the schools, similar to how the community users are frustrated with having difficulties in getting information from NCS. Um, that was one of the issues. FCPA, um, they're working directly with NCS, and everybody seems to be having trouble with uh, what, what is called the transfer date. Um, another thing that came out that was uh, uh, very important to hear is um, this um, form 8423 and 8421, which are documents that um, that <clears throat> John can speak to of uh, documents that the schools are supposed to complete and get the information so that you can meet this transfer date where the information goes from um, the school system, which is uh, FS Direct, to the NCS system, which is AFSS, those transfer dates are really important, and we're finding out that there's a lot of issues involved in that. Um, and and <clears throat> the timing of all this is, is really important. So we had a lot of good information. Um, I did ask the three um, entities, FCPS, FCPA, and NCS to give um, to give a short presentation on what their procedures are. Uh, and it was very important to hear um, from all of them of what those procedures are and some of the challenges that um, we may not even understand or know about. So that was uh, that was good to hear. Uh, we do have a follow up meeting on February 7th. Um, to kind of uh, pull all those comments together. We, we spent a good hour on, um, on that uh, meeting that we had. Uh, one piece that we did identify that's missing from the committee is design and construction. 
Um, I believe that John had committed to going back uh, to Bill Curran to see if we could get somebody from design and construction on that committee. I may be wrong on that, but I think, uh, you know, Rob had brought that up that um, it's really important that we have design and construction and in, involved in this. Uh, the other piece, and, uh, uh, you know, Megan, you touched on it. I see you're still on, so I appreciate your staying on for a moment. Um, but, you know, the schools are, are to be used by everybody and community use and what we do at the Athletic Council with this co committee is is really important to make sure that we're that everybody is sharing and and doing the important things that we do for the kids. Um, the kids are that the community users are involved with are the same kids that go to the schools. So, you know, we're working with the same people. Um, one other sidebar is just to let the everybody know that I did have a separate meeting with Stella uh, Pekarski last uh, Friday, had a good conversation with her and Megan. I think you may uh, hear from her. She asked who was the rep and and you know uh, explained that you were on the board now and attending meetings, which is wonderful. Um, and like Rob said, you have an athletic background, so you're maybe more focused than some of the other. Um, Stella, you know, many of you may or may not know, she's got six kids and five of them are actively involved in sports, so she's kind of in tune with it as well. Um, so that's just a quick update. I don't know, um, Rob, John, anybody else that was that's on the subcommittee, if you want to add anything that I missed, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I think this is Rob. I, I Ultimately, Gary, you said it well, we're servicing the same athletes in the same community, whether it be through the school system or through community use. And I wear both hats, so it gives me an opportunity to sort of see both sides. You know, us as community users need to be, you know, better partners in terms of taking care of facilities. I think on the school side, we unfortunately, through communication and other issues, community use and community users sort of become secondary and an afterthought because I truly believe that our activities offices are the hardest working offices in any high school, um, forgetting about elementary and middle school for a second. So they're so overwhelmed with work and they work so hard already that I think at times community use and the communication with community use um, just becomes secondary. Um, so we hope to come out of this committee in our in our next meeting or two with with some solutions to get back where we were because five ten years ago i think uh uh we we had better communication and i think with turnover both at the community use side and the school side it's just hard to keep everybody abreast with how we how we organize and how we communicate with each other thanks gary uh, Lula. This is, Lula and Jason, would you mind before I hop off if I just want to respond quickly to what Mike just said? And then I'm so sorry, I have to duck off to this other meeting. Sure. Um, you know, Mike, I couldn't have said it better just now along with Gary. And I, I want to assure all of you, I'm so glad in this meeting I was here for this dialogue in particular because Mark Miena and others can tell you I am full bore on FCPS holding up its side of the bargain in our responsibility that um, these are, again, taxpayer facilities. And we have to do a better job of making sure that we're better partners um, with the Park Authority, NCS, and our um, rec leagues. So this is not a hard lift for me at all. Uh, Stella Brokarski is our chair of the board, and that carries its nice um, degree of uh, power and um, influence. So I'll, I'll be working with Stella as well. but. Um, Mike, I hope to get us back to a much better place on this. And one one piece that I want to make sure you all aware of, and and Bill can carry on in in my absence because he actually knows more than I do most of the time. Um, but you know, the board did approve the superintendent giving um, additional fifty percent um, position, so making it from part time to full time um, another um, athletic uh, assistant DSA. Um, so to everything you all said, our assistant DSAs, our DSAs were so busy trying to manage school athletics and facility use and then community use. And, uh, you know, it was just a, a manpower challenge in some respect. So that commitment by the school board and the superintendent to put more money into those positions. And we are using our ESSER funds 
Um, those are our federal COVID dollars um, to help fund that need. And I see that continuing post COVID, but um, really want to give you that good news as well, that I think we're heading in the right direction. But um, what might help all of um, me is anyone who can capture, um, you know, Gary in particular, um, the challenges that you all have had, um, both Bill and I, and certainly with Stella, happy to bring this to the superintendent and um, the board and Jeff Plattenberg's attention on what do we need to do better um, in, in making this happen quicker with the better communications and the access piece. So thanks again, you guys. I'm sorry to miss the rest of the fun. Um, and I promise in future meetings, I won't talk as much, but uh, very grateful for the time. Thank you so much. Enjoy your next meeting. Bye. Gary, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, I was just going to say if John wanted to add anything or Anne-Marie, um, anybody else. Um, and I know Mark's got his hand up to ask questions. No, I think, Gary, this is John. I think you covered it pretty accurately, so I don't really have anything to add. I did want to clarify uh, the person I was going to connect with was going to be Vicki Gardner, uh, not necessarily Bill. I think that might become as a shock to Bill because he's hearing that the first time, but I was going to chat with Vicki uh, and then come back to the subcommittee uh, at our next meeting. Roger that. Thanks. Did somebody have their hand up, Mark? Mark did, I think. Is that an old hand, Mark? <laughs> it, is, it is an old hand, a very old hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that said, we'll move right along. Um, reports by the sports representatives. Jason, do you have that? Yep, I got it. Mm -hmm. uh, baseball, Rob? Yeah, we don't, uh, not a ton to report. Obviously, in the off season, we are um coming up on some important meetings uh gary was a part of an initial meeting that we had uh prior to the holidays sort of a state of baseball dinner um and we're going to continue those with the retreat coming up in a few weeks to just talk about how um we can better help all the different entities within baseball in fairfax county to work together to grow and promote our game and keep kids in the sport um, and that goes all the way through the high school level as well. So I thought it was a great start um, a month or so ago when we met and we're going to build upon that uh, moving forward. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. Um, basketball, I don't think anybody's on. Um, fast pitch softball, did anybody sign on? And next is football, Mark. Nope, he's muted. No, nothing. We're quiet. All right. Uh, lacrosse, Marianne. Uh, hello. Yeah, not much going on with lacrosse either. Uh, just doing some pre preliminary looking at our numbers. We don't really seem to have bounced back from pre to pre-COVID uh, numbers, but it's still kind of early. And then I guess the other thing is, are there any additions or changes to the COVID restrictions that are going out on the permits? Are there any updates to that or are we going with what we used last year? And just just from our sense, we uh, at NCS, we're following uh, uh, basically indoors with the FCPS protocol and so indoors, whatever uh, they go with, we go with, and we haven't heard any updates. Everything is still status quo now until something changes, maybe dropping down from the CDC or whoever, but uh, that's where we are right now. So for even for outdoor sports, we're following the indoor? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, slow pitch adult softball. Did anybody sign on? Next is uh, soccer, Lula and Trish. Oops, sorry. I muted you, Lula, by accident. Sorry. Trish? There you go. Are you on? Yeah, I'm on. Um, so 
So the kids want snow days, we get snow, and then we can't get back on the fields to practice. So I have a bunch of coaches gnashing their teeth until today when all the synthetic turf fields were open. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Otherwise, it's just quiet and kids are registering for spring. Thanks. So um, I would like to just add to that kudos to, is it Park Authority or NCS that's getting the notifications out that you know which fields are open, which fields aren't open and, and things of that nature. You guys have been spot on these last two weeks. So we appreciate that tremendously. So thank you so, so, so much for that. That's it for soccer. Cool, thank you. Uh, volleyball, Anne-Marie. Hi, oh, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, Rob is traveling for business, so you guys got me. Um, just real quick, high school volleyball starting smoke and gyms uh, this month. Uh, fourth grade through 12th grade leagues and um, are starting with their assessments tryouts. And club volleyball in the area has started tournaments. And, uh, and as you were talking about COVID, the COVID protocols vary depending on the facility or the tournament or the league. Um, so you have to stay on top of that. And then also we've seen an increase in um, kids wanting to start high school boy volleyball clubs. So we're trying to help them out and point them in the right direction. We know that's going to be a challenge for gym space, uh, but we're going to see what we can do with some of the uh, kids who are interested in playing or starting clubs in the fall. That's it. Cool. Thanks, Amory. And that's it. It's uh, next section. She's muted, <clears throat> muted. Somebody keeps muting me. That's yeah, okay. sorry. It, That's it, okay. You have an echo. <laughs> I do? Uh-huh. Oh, I am just a hot mess tonight. Okay, matters of interest. Um, school board, shall we? Anybody from school board? I'm here, this is Bill. I, I, I kind of feel like we covered this. Megan took all the time that was available to us, so I'll I'll, I'll, I'll certainly move it pretty quick. Um, as of now, our, our indoor gyms for games are still limited to uh, family members only. I'm pretty liberal with regards to that definition, but family members only, that's supposed to be updated tomorrow. So there may be an updated announcement with regards to our uh, games and competitions that comes out tomorrow afternoon. So just be on the lookout for that. Um, and you know, with that, I'll again, I'll keep it short and sweet. Megan covered some of the biggest stuff we had. So happy to answer any questions anyone has. Okay, thank you. Um, Park Authority, Mark, Mike? Mike? Thompson? Uh, yeah, no, I'm here, but is, is it? Yep, you want me to go, Mike? Yeah, please. I'm sorry, I couldn't see um, on the screen. Nothing really from the Park Authority, no, no news on projects. Uh, I did supply NCS, Jason and Mark, uh, uh, list for the year's closures. So they do have the year's the field closures for various reasons. And I assume you all just plug it in. Yep. Uh, but we have given them that, and that's always subject to change. But we think it's a pretty good list. Uh, and then that is all I have. Yeah, Snow the other thing I would add, I would add to that, Kurt, um, is that you, we had agreed, um, and I we haven't had time to put together, but in the past, uh, we the park authority provided a renovation document that showed kind of a the cycle of expected renovations for the turf fields. Sometimes those are off. Um, for example, Patriot Park lasted a year too longer than expected, and Braddock Park got bumped up a year. So there there are some things that change in it. But that planning document I know hasn't been distributed in quite a while. And in the committee meeting um, in Gary's committee. We committed that we would uh, look to revitalize that document, as well as Kirk giving that information to NCS on closures. Um, and the only the only other thing I would say is, uh, y'all, please recognize that um, this is this is winter. Um, we'll do the best we can to clear fields of snow and stuff. But please remind users: do not go to turf fields with snow shovels and remove the snow yourself. That is not helpful. That hurts the fields. So if you guys could please remind all your users that we just need to let the sun melt the snow and the fields will be available. 
that is a much better than than puncturing them with snow shovels or moving all of the uh, infill off by shoveling off the snow. Okay, thank you. Um, moving right along, NCS. Um, hello, yeah, you can see my dog back on the treadmill. He's used it right now more than I have all year. Um, just, uh, um, I guess the biggest thing right now is that we're, we're indoor and seasons are going and just a, just a heads up that, um, you know, we're doing our best we can with cancellations and things like that with the weather. We get the word out as soon as we can. It's really important to check the FCPS website to know when activities are canceled. Um, I know tomorrow I think they're going virtual, but I don't think a decision has been made in terms of what may happen in terms of activities. I think that's accurate. Uh, Bill, is that correct? Is that what you understand? Uh, we will update tomorrow around noon. The expectation, based on the current weather reports, if everything remains the same, we'll we'll be open tomorrow afternoon for activities. Okay. Um, and also just an understanding that we were getting some cancellations, and John can touch on this a little bit if he has to, based on the fact that some schools are struggling to get custodians to cover based on COVID. Uh, there's a lot of custodians and a lot of people that are out in the buildings so therefore it's difficult sometimes to get um, coverage. Uh, so it's important that if you are not using your facilities on a weekend for whatever reason it may be, that you let us know so that we can let the schools know so that they can let their custodians know they don't have to come in. But we're, you know, we're getting updates and it just, uh, that, that's just, unfortunately, that's just part of the reality now. John, is that pretty accurate? Pretty much, we're, we are working with staffing on, on all the schools uh, and trying to react to uh, any issues that the schools have, uh, working with not only the school custodians, but also trying to bring in field custodians to cover any gaps. So uh, any time there is uh, a, a gap that we cannot fill, we do let Mark know uh, as soon as possible to see what can be done to uh, move folks around. Um, but I think what he said there is very important. If, if there is a chance that you are not using space um, that you already have reserved, uh, please let us know. That way we can make some of those movements a little bit more seamless. Um, and then uh, the last thing for us right now is I think we're starting to work on our spring schedules. Um, uh, so please, uh, you know, be patient. We're trying to get those out um, by early February, mid February, a month ahead of the season. Um, so you guys can do some planning. I know this is going to come to a shocker for some of you, especially the soccer people, but we don't have any groups yet that have called and says, hey, we don't need as much space. We're good. Please, we'll give you a lot of space back. So it just, it's just, it's a puzzle that we're trying to put together and we're working really hard. The schedulers are, hopefully they'll be reaching out to you, talking to you, and we're trying to just make this as fair as possible. Nobody ever gets exactly what they want, but we hope that people can get what they need. So just uh, that's it, and that's it from uh, NCS. I don't know uh, anything else. I see Lori the toy, and I don't know if he wanted to say anything. I should have gone to him first, so I apologize for that. Um, I don't. I don't have anything, Mark. Thanks, man. Okay, um, Jason. Anything from your end? Um, the only thing. Do you have an update on Champions of Character? Have you talked to um, Chris Pulley? Uh, yeah, I know that uh, the Champions of Character is going to be, uh, I, I, I want to say it's going to be like a webinar or a, um, I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, it's newfangled. What is it, Jason, you young people? Uh, it's like a, a YouTube hangout or something like that. Yeah, it's going to be something or like watch that. Party. So, YouTube watch party, that's what it is. Yeah, that's right, the watch party. So my pen and paper that I would normally use don't usually work very well with that, but um, I think we're getting all of the, um, I hope you guys have gotten your um, nominees in. If not, people are reaching out to you to get nominees and we'll hopefully be getting the word out soon, but there's, it's gonna be a watch party where people are gonna be taping things and things of that nature. Um, and that's coming up. Somebody has their hand raised. Yes, Gary? Yeah, I was just gonna add in, Mark, I'm on the committee with uh, Chris Pulley and we have, uh, we have finalized the selection, so we are moving forward. And um, 
now it's just a matter of determining if it's i think he was shooting for a march 1st date for that watch party not 100 percent sure but uh things are moving and you know the magisterial rep should get some information on how that's going to proceed pretty soon yeah and thank you guys for um getting the not help not getting the nominations in i know chris pulley really appreciates it very good okay moving right along any new business Any old business? Mike Thompson moves to adjourn. Hold up, Mike, before you uh, make that motion, can I just, this is Gary again, sorry to interrupt, but Mark, I believe Mark Vienna, I think you're the one that made a comment last meeting or two ago about creating a forum for officials and how we might be able to convert that effort. I, I thought it was a great idea. If it wasn't you that brought it up, Maybe uh, we can address this in the next couple of meetings. Yes, I, I made the recommendation, but I, I had the caveat that if everybody around the table representing their sports and emerging sports um, didn't participate, in other words, it wasn't a unilateral effort on our part that we shouldn't do it. Agreed. This can't be led by one, two, or three groups. It's got to be everybody on officials. And this is where the county and everybody would help utilizing all the means they have as well to reach out and suggest all the different options to try to uh, help stem, uh, you know, the, the officiating issue where they're leaving and not coming back. So, again, the emphasis I make is this is important, I think, and everybody will agree, but it has to be a full court press and not just a noted item on an agenda that you skim over. So it's called commitment. And if you want to make it, I think it's a great effort. It will help everybody. OK, thank you. Any any other comments? No, Mike Thompson tries to adjourn again. <laughs> hey, can I jump in real quick on Mark? I couldn't agree 100 I mean, I couldn't agree more. I think I did last time. This is Rob. Sorry, Mike. Um, <laughs> Megan thought I was you anyway, so I'm, I'm still reeling from that. Um, but we are, we are, I'm on, um, the American Baseball Coach Association, Association, which is on the board, which is essentially USA Baseball. And this is a huge conversation, lack of umpires throughout the country. Repeat, literally tournament organizers and event and league organizers are flying in people from Puerto Rico, and Canada, and other countries just to have enough officials to run events and leagues. This is a huge issue. Mark, I'm 100% all in. I just want to throw that in. Sorry. OK. Thank you for that. I'm not making the motion again. I'm three times three times the charm. Come on, Mike. No, I move to adjourn. I second. That's Gary. So moved. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Great right. Thanks. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Good night, everyone.